Palarty and Stefan Vogel from RT, RWTH. This is a, model, a presentation that is focused on the synchronization between the OPALRT and the RTDS systems. So for this system, we have again two models running on one on, on RTLab and the other on RSCAD. The one that you are seeing now is the one that is running on RTLab. It's basically here I have a counter that is sent to the, the communication link between the two systems. And I also receive a counter. It's um, the fourth, the third value I will receive from RTDS is the, um, the time step counter on their side. So we do a loop back on, on our side here. We do a loop back to send back their counter on their side to compute the, the round trip delay of the communication on both direction. And they do the same thing for the fourth value. We send it on the fourth value here and it will come back and we'll be able to compute the loop time delay. In this case, we also have a loop back on FPGA. So I'll open the RTXSG model. Here it's a bit less easy to see but the data number two that we receive from the link, which is coming here on the reception data, is sent back as data number two on the other side. So we'll be able to compute here. There is a, a counter at the bottom that will compare that the value that we receive to the value that we sent. Oh no, sorry. So that's on number one. So on uh, the data number one here, I have a uh, a clock cycle counter, so it will count on 32 bits the number of clock cycles since the beginning of, since the model was loaded. Um, we send that to the, the link and we'll receive it back after the loop back on RTDS as data number one. We compare what we receive with what we sent and with a counter here, count the number of clock cycles in between, and we'll be able to know how long is the, the, the round trip delay as seen from the FPGA. Now if we go to the SCAD model, it's here. Um, we see that we have a time step counter on the bottom left here. And the uh, subtractors here are to measure the difference between what we receive and the, and the internal counter to measure the round trip delay. So we have the delay with, between what we receive after the loopback in FPGA and the internal counter, what we receive after the uh, from the loopback from the CPU in RTLab and the internal counter. And inside of this block, we have the actual loopbacks back to OpalRT. So we see that signals 1, I from GT1, and 4, I from GT2 are going back to OpalRT here in the two GTFPGA, so I from GT1 and I from GT2, GT4, sorry. So again, here I'll go back to RTXSG. In this case, we are synchronizing on that pulse that is coming from the protocol. It's called user t-step pulse. It's passing through the fiber optic and it's coming from the RTDS backplane. And we use it, we made a little function here to, able, to be able to use it as the OpalRT system synchronization. So to do this in the, in the RTLab model, I set my FPGA to be the master of synchronization from external clock. And in this way, I'm able to start the simulation. Now I'm loading the model here. So something important in the um, execution here, I put a time factor of, uh, of a very high value so that I can reach the maximum timeout before I start the, the RTDS simulation. If OpalRT doesn't receive a synchronization pulse within the equivalent of 500 pulses of the uh, internal um, synchronization, it will uh, issue a, a timeout and the simulation will, will reset. So I just arrange my time factor so that it, it's the, the, the time step is very large, but actually in, in real time it will be synchronized from RTDS at 25 microseconds. 
So I click here, execute, and then I have four seconds to click the execute on the other side and start the simulation. So here I have my loopback times. So the one that is the the diff the first one is the different is the one way latency. So it's the difference between the internal time step and the time step counter as coming from the RTD la uh, RT lab system. So we see that there is a one step delay and that's due to the, the communication link. The second one is the round trip delay from RSCAD to our uh, to Opal RT's ML605 ML and then back. It's two time steps. And the, um, the loop back from RSCAD to the ML605 and down to RT Lab and back to the ML605 and back to RSCAD is three time steps. And we see that they are really not changing. So they are really constant. So we can assume that they are, um, the synchronization is really wor working well. If we go back to RT Lab, so I'll go to my console. Here, I receive my counter delays, so they are, they are updating as the simulation is going. So it's not the, the difference here; it's I really it's the raw data from the, the counter. To have an exact value, I'll stop it and I'll put the format to long. And I can see that here the fourth value I receive, which is my counter that is coming back from the, the loopback is one step behind the counter that is coming directly from RTDS. And the first one here is um, the one I sent, I think. The uh, loop time here is the number of clock cycles in the FPGA between the time I send my value, I send my clock cycle counter to the optical link and the time the same value comes back in return. So it's 5,400, around 5,400 clock cycles at five nanoseconds, that's 27 microseconds. So it's one time step plus more or less two microseconds. And these two microseconds are the reception time from the RTDS system. So I think that concludes the, um, this example.